Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. It is a typical January day in Idaho with temperatures soaring above 400 degrees on the Rankin scale. On the Fahrenheit scale, I think it's about negative six. Anyway, I was coming down with a case of cabin fever, so it seemed like a good time to make a trip out to see the Fish Creek ice formations. And until my camera battery freezes, which may not be very long here, I figured I might as well bring you guys along for the ride. Well, the Fish Creek Dam is within sight. The dam is built up of a series of concrete arches and it leaks like a sieve, hence the ice formations. Hey, I think I found the old access road to the dam. Of course, judging by the tracks in the snow, I'd say the only ones who've been accessing it recently are a couple of coyotes. Looks like we've got company. Well, I should be able to skirt around those elk without disturbing them. And there is the Fish Creek Dam in all its dilapidated glory. I've always wondered why there's so much rebar sticking out of this thing. Well, looks like there's some ice formations in gallery number one. For the record, walking underneath of a crumbling dam with 100-pound icicles dropping from the ceiling at any moment is probably not the most safety-conscious thing I've ever done, but let's have a closer look anyways. Looks like there was a larger mass of icicles on the ceiling that recently fell to the floor. You can see how big this chunk of ice is, and that's just a small piece of it. It's probably good I wasn't here when that fell. Got sort of a frozen waterfall effect over here where the water's dripping down on this big rock. That was a smaller icicle that just fell from the ceiling. Well, there's a nice view of the uh, frozen falls with the sun kind of behind them or off to the side. And that's quite the impressive column back here. That's got to be what, 12 or 15 feet tall? Some of the icicles have an inch or more of hoarfrost on them as well. Must have been a fog bank that came through here recently.
I can get more of that ice in the picture if I turn the camera sideways. These are some interesting nodules where the spatter forms and freezes. Maybe I ought to get out from under those. There's another big block that fell from the ceiling sometime when I wasn't here, thankfully. And there we have the hydraulic analog of a stalagmite. And a pretty extensive one at that. Well, we had a good show in gallery number one. Let's see what we find in gallery number two. Well, if I can get this all in the picture here, in gallery number two, we have one fantastic ice mite, ice stalagmite. I don't know if there's an official name for these. That thing's got to be at least eight feet tall. Probably weighs a couple of tons. That probably weighs a ton or two, too. <laughs> Hopefully it won't detach while I'm down here. Those columns are pretty impressive, too. I mean, that one there is probably close to 20 feet tall. Hey, maybe that's what the rebar is for. It helps hold up the ice. Well, if gallery number one had some fantastic ice formations, gallery number two all the more so. Let's see what's in gallery number three. Looks like they've been doing some work on gallery number three. It's hardly leaking at all. Let's check number four. Should I be concerned about the fact that there's all these little flakes of concrete on top of the snow next to this concrete pyre? And it does look like we have some ice formations in gallery number four. 
Let's have a closer look. Well, for sheer volume of ice, I think this gallery takes the cake, but most of the ice is just flat on the floor instead of suspended from the ceiling or built up into spectacular formations. There are some columns back here at the back. That's still a pretty substantial ice column there. It's just dwarfed by its neighbors in the other galleries. Interesting, all the different colors in the ice. I mean, a lot of it's just kind of translucent, like you'd normally think of, but some of it's chalk white, and then of course where you get some iron oxide in it from the rusting rebar, it takes on more of a amber rose hue. Look at that water just pouring out of that hole in the wall. With the cold weather, it's kind of built a pipe of ice around itself. And we've got some impressive ice crystals forming on the pipe. Now, of course, that wall is supposedly what's holding up these concrete arches that hold back the reservoir. So, between the amount of water pouring out of the wall and the amount of broken concrete littering this gallery, I think maybe it's time to move on. Let's see what's in gallery number five. And in gallery number five, it looks like we've got more ice formations and less broken concrete. So let's head on in. There's another hole in the wall with an ice pipe around it. Kind of some interesting undulating ice flows over here and more crystals on the outside of the pipe. Look at this little willow sprout that's just encased in ice. And there's an even bigger ice pipe from an even bigger hole in the wall. And there's a pile of concrete debris. Maybe this gallery isn't any safer than the last one after all. That is really quite the ice formation there. I don't recall ever seeing these ice pipes when I've been here before. I wonder if the holes in the walls are getting bigger. And speaking of getting bigger, that is a massive chunk of ice that fell from the ceiling sometime this winter. I'm glad it's not still up there, although I guess there's icicles up there that are still heavy enough to do some damage. Do I dare walk under that curtain of icicles to get a closer look at those columns? I guess so. That 
isolagmite there. It looks like some sort of a canine tooth. <laughs> You know, there's dozens of other galleries in this dam, but these five are the most accessible, and we've already seen quite the array of uh, fantastic ice formations today. I think my cabin fever is pretty well cured, and surprisingly, my camera battery hasn't frozen yet. So, I think I'm going to bring this video to a conclusion here, and until next time, thanks for watching The Idahoan Show.